All right, so today I want to give you an update on my ball python breeding season, and I want to give you an update on some of my females that I'm pairing up this year, so you can kind of get an idea of some of the hatchlings that I may have available about midsummer, if these snakes will actually lay eggs. You never know with ball pythons if they're going to go or not. This year I'm actually pairing up 23 females. It's pretty amazing. And I actually had a question under one of my videos. Someone said, hey, when can we stop pairing up the males and the female ball pythons? and I pretty much paired them up for the very last time yesterday I separated all the males and the females pretty much for the last time so right now it's the middle of February and I actually started pairing up in the middle of October so it's been four months since I started cycling my males through my females and I kind of had a, a slightly different cycle this year as a matter of fact when I first started in ball pythons I think I was cycling my males through my females too often I just kept cycling them through over and over and over and this year I really spread it out most people would agree that you really only need to pair up your ball pythons once every month for about three or four months and that's kind of what I did this year so essentially what I did is I took one male and I paired it with a maximum of four females so I took that male I put it in with a female for three days and then after that I took the male paired it up with another female for three days and then I gave them about a week and a half off where I could actually feed them really well and then give them a little time before I moved that male to two more females and it's pretty much the same so I did another three-day rotation on one female three days on another and then I'd separate them and that was pretty much a one month cycle cycling the male through four females and I actually went through four complete cycles over the period of four months and I was actually looking back at some of my old records for my breeding and it looks like my very first eggs on one year were in the middle of March so I figure right now my females should be ovulating although I haven't really been looking for the ovulations we may actually see some today but I'm thinking the first eggs that I actually would see would be right in the middle of March about 60 days away and then keep in mind those eggs have to incubate for two months so March April May before I have hatchlings and then another month before they're ready to go because you have to feed them so it'd be like the middle of June before I have my very first hatchlings that I'd have available over on Morph Market and usually you get hatchlings you know anywhere from there to like two or three months months later sometimes you can get eggs that are kind of stretched out over several months so sometimes it can be kind of stretched out over into the fall even with hatchlings which is it's kind of crazy and as it's, it's, it's a matter of fact it's actually better to kind of stretch them out a little bit because you'll know, actually uh, if, if I have eggs all at the same time I can completely fill my incubator and run out of space so it's a little bit better for me if I stretch them out a little bit so kind of the interesting thing this year is there's a couple things that I did different I actually paired up some of my females that were fasting and that were a little bit on the thin side and it seemed like pairing up those males and females with a fasting female, a lot, I'd say the majority of the time, it actually stimulated those females to start feeding again, just pairing them up with the males, which is kind of interesting. And the other thing I did this year is I added a whole room humidifier and increased the humidity in my room to anywhere from about 65% to about 70% humidity. And let me tell you, that one thing right there put all my females back on food as soon as I turned that humidifier on. They all went on food in the middle of the breeding season, which was pretty amazing. So they're looking pretty good. They're eating really well. And I'm thinking I'm going to have a really good breeding season. So let's jump over and check out some of these females. I'm just going to go through this rack and tell you some of the pairings. And if they lay eggs, some of the hatchlings that we can expect from some of these female ball pythons. All right, so here's the rack that I want to go through. This is actually an ARS 7030 up on top, just a few levels of the 7030. And then I have a boa tub in the middle and then some ARS 8018 tubs on the bottom. I just love how this stacks really nice. And these are pretty much all my really big female ball pythons, all except this one right here. This is where Bobby lives. Bobby is the only male in this whole rack of ball pythons. These are all my females, all except Bobby, and Bobby's got plenty of room in this. This is a big ARS 70 series tub, 
And I just went through and changed all the coconut husk on this too, which is pretty awesome. And then this one, this one is not a female ball python. It's kind of my only other one. This is my, uh, this is Sunny, a reticulated python. And this guy, ever since I turned that uh, humidifier on, this guy's been just pounding the rats like crazy, almost frightening the way he's been like leaping after those rats it's just going crazy and it's really good too because he's been fasting a really long time and i don't really want him it looks like looks like he can take another one he's been taking like three rats a week which is kind of crazy using up all my rats and gaining some weight finally after all this time he's been fasting for months and finally back on food so what i'm gonna do is i guess i'm just gonna kind of go down uh and start pulling some females so this is my Head caramel female number two, and look at how big this one is. This is, I'm pretty sure, this is my biggest ball python. Of the over 5,000 grams on this girl. Look at how big she is. She's been off of food for quite a long time. 100% head caramel albino. And this one, let me see if I can pull out my cheat sheet here. Head caramel female number two, I'm breeding it to a bamboo lesser. So if this girl does lay eggs, I think she's gonna lay it because look at how big she is and she hasn't been eating for quite a while now. So if this girl lays a big clutch of maybe 15 eggs, I'm thinking I'll get 50% bamboos and 50% lessers since it's an allelic combination with the bamboo lessers. So that would be pretty awesome getting a whole bunch of bamboos. I know a lot of people have been wanting bamboos and last year I had some, I had some really bad luck with my, with my bamboos last year. I had a 10 egg clutch with breeding my bamboo too and I got one bamboo out of 10 eggs which is kind of crazy. So this is my lesser female and she actually came back on food too with a vengeance ever since I turned down that humidifier. So this one, let me see, this is lesser female number two. This one is actually, wait a minute, lesser female number two. Okay, this is a bamboo calico that I'm breeding to this one. So the bamboo and the lesser will be a blue-eyed leucistic. So I'll, I might get some blue-eyed leucistics from this one and I might have some calico, might get some calico bamboos, might get some calico bamboo lessers too, which would be pretty awesome. That, that's a pretty awesome combination there. And I have another head caramel here. This one, I'm pretty much doing the same thing. Boy, I thought that one was on eggs there for a minute. <laughs> Look at how big she is. She's all wrapped up, looking really good. And this one I'm actually breeding with my bamboo lesser too, so I'll get half bamboos, half lessers from that one. And then here on the bottom, Look at how big this one is. That is a monster. She's definitely gonna lay eggs. She is eating like crazy. That is, I'm gonna have a really good year this year for all these snakes' legs. So that is my pastel pinstripe female number one, which is a lemon blast. I'm breeding with my Coral Glow Het Pied. Coral Glow 100% Het Pied. So I'll get some more Coral Glow uh, pinstripes, one of my favorite combinations on that one. And some Coral Glows and some Coral Glow Lemon Blast, although you really can't see the pastel in the Coral Glow pinstripes very good. All right, so let's see what else we have. We have Bubbles. Bubbles is my pinstripe. I'm not sure on Bubbles if she's gonna lay. She's looking, well, she's looking, looking pretty good. She laid pretty late last year. This is just a pinstripe. So my pinstripe female, I am breeding with my banana inchy clown. That's gonna be awesome. So I really wanna reproduce some more banana inchy clown. Well, it'd be banana inchy pinstripe and it'd all be 100% het clown because this girl is not het clown as far as I know, which would be pretty awesome. And then my lesser clown, I'm not sure on this girl. So this is a pretty awesome combination. Lesser Clown, as soon as I paired her up, she stopped eating. I don't think this one's gonna go, but if she does, I paired this up with my albino pied, hoping for some more triple hats. Maybe on this one I'll get a lesser triple hat albino pied clown, which would be pretty awesome. Add to my triple hat project. And then pastel calico. 
this is a really awesome female. I'm hoping this girl goes. She's been eating pretty good, looking pretty chunky. And this one we found out last year that she is 100% het desert ghost. So I'm breeding my pastel inchy desert ghost to this one. Hoping for another visual desert ghost. I had one last year and I actually sold it. I should have hung on to that one. I want to produce another one though, which would be pretty awesome. So take a look at this one. This one, it was fasting for a really long time. Uh, up until I started pairing her up and then she seemed like the pairing her up on this one really triggered her appetite and she started eating like crazy. So this one, another Lemon Blast Pastel Pinstripe Female number four. I have to pull out my cheat sheet. <laughs> uh, that's another Banana Inchy Clown on that one. I absolutely love the, the combination of the banana enchi with pretty much anything. So I could potentially get banana enchi pastel pinstripe 100% head clown if I hit all the genes, which would be pretty awesome. All right, so I had to pull out my step stool on this one, and here is my cheat sheet and my breeding schedule. You can see it's kind of been through the war. <laughs> it's all kind of crumpled up. So let's come all the way up. All the way up to the top here. Let's see what we got. So we have an albino female. Ooh, she's way up here. Take a look at this. And my albino female, I'm pairing her with my albino pied, hoping for some, uh, this one's actually, well, they'll all be albinos, 100% het pied on this one. And I dropped my cheat sheet, uh, but I do know on this one, <laughs> this one, all right, so I know this one, this is my albino 100% head pied. I'm breeding this one with my albino pied. I'm not sure on this one. She's been eating just recently. She went back on food. As a matter of fact, I'm going to try to feed her again tomorrow. She looks like she'd take another one. So if she'll actually get up to weight and... Uh, eat a few more meals she might lay and I might get some visual albino pies which would be pretty awesome all right so here is a normal normal female number three ooh she just shed and went to the bathroom since last night I just went through and spot cleaned everyone last night and I've been spot cleaning like every three days or something. Look at how big she is. And I actually paired my banana inchy clown to this one, hoping for some more banana inchies, 100% head clown. This is uh, the second year for that snake. The, the banana inchy clown is two years old now, so that's pretty awesome. So here is another lesser, lesser female. Uh, I'm actually going to have to do a little dance here with all this lighting because uh, <laughs> I'm kind of challenged in the lighting department here. So this is another lesser, so take a look at that. That is another lesser female. She's been kind of picky, not as big as my other lesser. So this is lesser female number two. I bred this one to my bamboo calico. So I should get some blue-eyed leucistic, some bamboo lessers out of this one, which would be pretty awesome. And some bamboo calicos, which is pretty awesome. All right, so here is my pastel female number one. Her name is Bugs. Looking pretty good. She's been eating pretty good. Looking pretty chunky. And this one, I bred my bamboo lesser to this one. So I should get some pastel bamboos, some bamboos, some uh, lesser, pastel lessers. Uh, so I won't get any, I won't actually reproduce the blue-eyed leucistic because it's actually an allelic combination. So half the offspring will be bamboo, half will be lessers, and then some of them will have the pastel thrown in the mix. That should be kind of an interesting combination. A lot of people want bamboos, and I kind of, Tried to kind of focus on the bamboo. So this one, I don't know about this one. She's been eating pretty good, but she laid really late last year. She might go. Last year she laid her first clutch of eggs. And this year, this is my pied female. Pied female actually mixed with my coral glow 100% het pied. Hoping for some coral glow pieds, which is pretty awesome. When I bought, as a matter of fact, when I bought that coral glow, 
100% head pipe. They were really super expensive, and now you can get them pretty cheap compared to, I mean, they're like thousands of dollars when I actually picked them up, which is kind of crazy. And then I have my Desert Ghost over here, so take a look at this one. Hopefully this girl still laid. She's, <laughs> she hasn't laid. Since I got her, she's been driving me crazy, but she's pretty big. I can't believe how big she is. This is my Pastel Spider Desert Ghost Female in a Deep Shed. And of course I bred this one to my uh, Pastel Anchi Desert Ghost Male. So everything should be Visual Desert Ghost and then I'll get some of them Pastel, some of them Super Pastel, and then some Spider and Anchi thrown in. Uh, it'll be a pretty awesome clutch. I'll probably hold back at least one female from this clutch. I definitely want a uh, visual. I'll probably hold back at least, you know, I'm trying to hold back just two every year. <laughs> I'll probably hold back one of these with the, the Desert Ghost and one of the Pides as far as my hold back next year. I don't want to hold back too many snakes. That's kind of what I ran into last year. If I can juggle some of this stuff around. All right, so pastel pinstripe. Female number three, this girl was really fasting like crazy. Just would not eat and would not eat. I think she went like eight months without eating. And then once I paired her up, she started eating. It was the, the pairing that triggered her to eat and she's been eating like crazy. So let's see, pastel pinstripe female number three. This is with the bamboo calico. So I'll get some bamboos, some, uh, so the, one of my favorite combinations is the bamboo with the pinstripe, almost like a metallic color stick. And then when you add pastel in there, it can make some really crazy combinations. So I'm really looking forward to that one. That's pretty awesome. And then let's see what I have over here. This is my normal female number one. This is one of the first snakes that I ever got. As a matter of fact, I got this girl for free off of Craigslist, which is pretty awesome. So let's see, normal female number one with my bamboo calico. <laughs> I'm trying to produce a lot of bamboos this year. A lot of people are interested in bamboo. So hopefully, I haven't been reserving any, everyone keeps writing me and says, hey, can you hold a bamboo for me? And I'm not really holding any because I don't know if I'll actually produce any or not. Hopefully I will. So let's take a look at this one. This is my normal female number four. Four, kind of an unusual looking normal on this girl. So this one, let's see, normal female number four. I am pairing up my bamboo lesser. So it'll be half bamboos, half lessers. More bamboos, I'll have a lot of bamboos this year. Hopefully if I can get these crazy snakes to actually lay some eggs. And then Bobby's here and here is uh, the last one in this rack. I actually have a couple more in the other rack. I can probably show you those. So this one's doing really good. A pastel pinstripe female number two. Let's see. Pastel pinstripe female number two. Crossing this one with my pastel Anchi desert ghost. Going for some... Uh, maybe like a, a, maybe like a super pastel pinstripe NG 100% Desert Ghost or something like that. And working pinstripe into the Desert Ghost project with the super pastel. That would be really awesome. I actually might hold back something like that if I actually hit a male with the super pastel head Desert Ghost with other jeans. I'm actually hold back something like that too. All right, so I'm going to end with a few snakes over here. I have just a few females in my ARS 5040 rack over here. And one of them, this one's I'm really excited about. If I can get the cord around the light here and get it all set up. This is actually my dinker project. A lot of people have been asking me, hey, are you going to breed your dinker? And this is kind of an unusual looking normal that I hatched out with a really crazy pattern just kind of on the edge as far as the weight. So I'm not sure if this one's gonna go. This one is two years old. So this is, let's see, uh, my Dinker. I'm actually breeding it with my Coral Glow 100% Het Pie. And it's kind of interesting on this one because if you actually look at the belly, she's really in a deep shed, <laughs> super deep shed. This one actually came from 100% Het Pie. And I don't know if you can see on this one because she's so in shed, but you can actually see a little bit of tracks on her belly, really crazy pattern. I think she's head pied, so maybe we'll get some visual pieds 
Maybe we'll actually see if it's a new gene mixing it with something else like the coral glow, which is kind of interesting. And then I have this one who has not laid eggs for me since I got her and she's been a really picky eater. I don't know if she's gonna go this year. <laughs> this is my pinstripe pied female. Pinstripe, let's see, ah, da, 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 if I can find her on my cheat sheet. Pinstripe pied female. I'm breeding this one with my fire pied. So I should get um, some fire pinstripe pieds, some fire pieds and some pinstripe pieds and probably just some regular pieds out of that. But I don't know if she's gonna lay eggs this year. So that one's probably not gonna go, if you ask me. These are not gonna go over here. I think they're just a little bit too small over here. I actually have one more. I have my clown over here. I don't think this clown's gonna go. She's been a really picky eater over here. It'll be a miracle if this one goes. Oh, she went to the bathroom since yesterday. <laughs> so this one, this is my clown. And I'm actually breeding this one to my albino pied, going for one more round of the triple hats, albino pied clowns. I actually produced some of them and then someone bought a few of them from me since a lot of people are actually asking me for the triple hats and I, I ran out of them so I thought I'd produce some more. Maybe if I could actually produce one with the lesser in it, I might keep that. It's probably the last year that I'll pair up the triple hats as far as the uh, the albino pied and clown. I already, have, uh, I already have two females that are triple hats down here that are not big enough. I didn't breed them this year, but they're looking really good. Look at that. Maybe next year they'll be big enough. Uh, the triple head albino pie clown. I have two females and one male looking forward to producing some on that one. So that is pretty much my entire breeding season. So as far as, oh no, I actually have one more. Wait, I have one more. One more over here. My female pastel pinstripe bamboo. Take a look at this one. Ooh, she just shed. Look at how beautiful that is. I absolutely love the lemon blast bamboos. <laughs> Take a look at that. That is one of the most beautiful things. They're almost like metallic looking. It's pretty amazing. So this one, let me look her up. Oh, I have to break out my cheat sheet here. So this is pastel pinstripe bamboo ah i'm breeding this with my banana inchy clown so that would be pretty awesome if i could get a banana inchy bamboo pastel pinstripe 100 percent head clown that would be the crown jewel of my collection pretty much the most genes i've ever had in a snake of this one i don't know if she'll lay eggs or not she's looking pretty good she's still right on the edge maybe a little over 1500 grams i'm hoping she'll actually lay but that would be a pretty awesome combination so that is my whole breeding season right there and as i go through and get eggs i'll be making you know i'll actually show you every time i get some eggs and every time they hatch and then when they're ready for sale i'll definitely make some videos and post them up on morph market so it looks like so far i may have a really good breeding season i'm expecting maybe between i'd say anywhere from 50 to 150 hatchlings as far as what I can expect this year. And I have just a couple left from last year. So I have this one, someone's still making payments on one. One last one, someone's making payments on. Doing really good. This is a hatchling from last year. Take a look at that, a pastel calico female. Possible het desert girls. And then I had two holdbacks from last year that I can kind of show you here. This is one, this is a pinstripe coral glow, 50% head pied. Beautiful snake, take a look at that beauty. And on this one, I'm thinking it's, it's possible it's head pied on this one. So this one, eventually I want to take this male and I want to breed it to my pied and maybe get some pinstripe coral glow pieds if it's if I can prove out the head pied on that one. And then I have one more over here. This is one of my holdbacks, a bamboo pastel pinstripe calico. This is one of my crown jewels from last year. Really beautiful snake. Kind of hiding here in the background. Look at how beautiful that snake is. I absolutely love the, the bamboo combination. As a matter of fact, I thought it was the world's first for a while. And then I looked over on Morphmark. It looked like someone actually produced just one that I found over there. Pretty amazing combination. So that is pretty much it as far as my show and tell for my breeding and some of my hatchlings for last year. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.